All right, welcome to another speaking uh, practice video. Today, Ms. Tu is back and she's doing her regular speaking practice. Okay, Ms. Tu, let's do part one. <clears throat> I'm going a bit too far now. Okay, let's talk about health. So how do you keep healthy? Or how do you keep your health? Or how do you keep good health? Normally, I will have a track record of how I keep fit. Uh, a track record, I, right? Yeah, a track record. Often, I will go for a walk for about once a week on the weekends. And also, I try to eat as much as healthy food as possible, such as vegetables and a lot of fruits. Mm. And I try to like avoid uh, fat foods, uh, and many candies and ice cream. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Now, what are your favorite sports? Well, I think I'm not a big fan of sports and I do not have any kind of favorite sport. But to choose one, I think I will choose badminton. Hmm. Well, because it does it doesn't really require me to uh, have a lot of strength, only uh, and also not a lot of equipment that I need to prepare before playing the sport. And I can also play with my family members or with my friends. So I think it's a very fun sport to do for me. I see. Now, are there health classes in your school, like classes that teach people how to keep healthy or to keep hygiene, you know? You fashion though to keep good hygiene. Sorry, it's hygiene second. Are there any health classes in your school? Sadly, I think in my school, there are no, really no health classes. Um, I think instead, those kind of lessons about health are incorporated in other kind of subjects, such as uh, biology, and we often learn it as a, um, as a, a subject, just one or two lessons about that, and then we just keep it. <clears throat> so I think, yeah, in my school, there's not many health classes for us. Hmm. Now, what sports help people stay healthy? Well, I think all kind of sports play a part in helping people to stay healthy. Um, for example, there are sports such as football or swimming or basketball. Those sports are those, those sports really require people to exercise a lot and they have to train and they have to use a lot of their strength so that they can keep up with their other teammates in playing these sports. Also, I think uh, many other sports uh, help people to stay healthy in a more, in a more, um, uh, in a less um, severe way. Like people don't really have to use much strength but they can still stay healthy. I think those are like uh, badminton or tennis, or uh, sometimes uh, running for some people. Some people <clears throat> can sports help people somehow in staying healthy. No, yes. Okay, so is it easy for people to exercise in your country? Think about like the facilities, the roads. Is it easy for people to run on roads in Vietnam? Is it safe? or something like that or um is there are there any parks any uh, any places where people can exercise stadiums badminton court something like that is it easy for people to exercise in your country actually i think it depends greatly on each uh, region in my country uh, for example uh, in many places people uh, can really can easily exercise through a lot of uh, facilities and there are also many parks built for people to um, doing to do exercise or to go for a walk. 
Mm. However, there are many regions who、uh, where people do not have any chance to exercise, and、uh, there are not enough facilities, and sometimes the roads are too bumpy or. It's sometimes too crowded, or it is hard for people to walk on it. So, I think、um, in my country, it depends on what region to decide whether it is、mm. easy for people to exercise. I see. Now, <clears throat> that's good enough for、uh, for seventy five. Let's go to the、uh, next one, which is um say seventy six ice cream. Do you like ice cream? Absolutely, I have been a big fan of ice cream since I was a little girl,、mm. and I think it、uh, it doesn't really matter to me whether it is summer or it's winter. I always have to eat ice cream for at least once or twice a week, even though I know it is not really healthy. But I just, <laughs> you know, I just can't help myself. Of course, you could not help yourself. It's just so. Sweet, you know. These days we have ice cream with boba, like tapioca pearls. You know. Bây giờ có kem mà có chân trâu, or tapioca pearls. You know. Oh my god. I think it's is it called bingsu. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and of course they are super sweet and, oh my god, it's addictive. Very addictive to、uh, to young people, I think. I mean, in a way. Now, do you eat ice cream a lot? <clears throat> well, actually, nowadays I do not eat ice cream as much as I used to. In the past, I was really addictive. I, I ice cream was really addictive to me, and I couldn't help myself、uh, eating ice cream only once or twice a month, but once or twice a week. But nowadays, as I grow up a little bit, I feel like eating ice cream too much is not really good for my health, and I can easily、um, come down with a lot of diseases such as obesity when I eat ice cream too much. So I just、um, reduce it to twice a month. I see. Now, did you eat ice cream as a child? Definitely, I think there is no child that <laughs> doesn't eat ice cream. There, there is no child that doesn't eat ice cream. As a child, I loved eating ice cream, and there was a time when I ate ice cream too much, that my mother had to take away all the ice cream for me, and I、oh、think I cried about、bad. it for about a week. Well, she was right to keep you away from the ice cream if you're too much into it, if you're too addicted to it. You know, ice cream can actually cause a lot of problem if you eat it a lot because ice cream is not exactly healthy. It can cause you,、uh, it can make you obese. You know, and also throat issues because it's cold. You may cough a lot. You know. Hoa hèn quá trời luôn phải không đâu? Tại vì kem nè, lạnh nè, and also unhealthy. Now, so are there shops selling ice cream where you live? Well, there are a lot of shops selling ice cream near where I live, and I think that's a factor that contributes to my addictive eating ice cream habit.、Um, and near, but and、uh, the shops selling ice cream near where I live. They have a very affordable prices for their ice cream, and also they always、uh, sell a lot of new types, new brands of ice cream, and a lot of new flavors that are really new and really are refreshing, and it's and they are really appealing to me.、Mm. <clears throat> I see. Now, so would you like to make your own ice cream? That would be excellent, you know. Absolutely, I think I would love to make my own ice cream. Actually, when I was small, I 
did dream about make uh, about opening an ice cream store where I can eat ice cream all day, and、um, I think making my own ice cream can help me to. I think it somehow helps me to become more creative in designing my own ice cream, and also I can add a lot of new flavors and I can try a lot of new ingredients into my own ice cream making. And I think that's a really good thing for me to experience. So yeah, I would love to make my own ice cream. <clears throat> you still hear me well? Still there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. I hear you well. Sometimes I just don't know. Some, but my equipment just glitch. You know. Probably I, I probably need to change a few wires. I think. I just don't know. But we are having a Mercury retrograde right now, so if equipment malfunction, it's normal. I know it's really annoying, but it's normal in the season. Okay. Now, let's、um, redo a few topics. <clears throat> Oh well, let's do part two first. Okay, sixty four. Then describe a time when that you misunderstood someone. A time you misunderstood someone. You should say when this happened, what you were doing, why you misunderstood the person, and explain how you felt about it. Okay, you have some time to think now. Okay, Miss Two, please describe a time that you misunderstood someone. So I'm going to talk about、uh, one of my misunderstandings between me and one of my classmates. Well, I think this happened a long time ago when it, I was in secondary school, and actually at that time, I and that friend were on pretty good terms, and I think we are we were really good friends.、Mm. However,、uh, there came a time when we just suddenly stopped talking to each other, and at first I thought she, I did something wrong that made her angry and made her mad, and so so she didn't want to talk to me anymore. And however, after a few days, I heard someone else say that she didn't actually like me. He didn't. He, she didn't actually like me, and she just only pretended to be my friends and only played with me to gain benefits for her. And there were no real friendship between us. So, because I was really small, and I think I was really naive. And naive, right? Was naive, really naive. Yeah. So I immediately like、uh, trusted that person without、uh, without thinking carefully, and. I didn't talk to her ever again since, but、uh, a few like about a year later, I found out that that wasn't really her fault. Actually, he she was undergoing some kind of、uh, problems that she found it hard to actually talk to someone about it, and instead of and her way of、uh, dealing with that problem was to stay away from other people and just. Let herself、uh, recharge her energy, and also let herself and、uh, want he and she wanted to self-reflect it on all the things that she had gone through. And this, after I fell down about this truth, I felt really sad and some, and I think very ashamed of my behavior, because it was not her fault. And、mm. Instead of trusting my friend, I tr- I believed in someone else's words, and then I, I think I turned my back on my friend when she needed me the most. And then I felt after that event, I tried to、uh, make and and after that event, I tried to be friends with her again, but we were never become good friends anymore. We just、uh, like regular friends. And that some sometimes nowadays that still make me real, feel really sad. I see. Very well. <clears throat> okay, that's sixty four. Let's try another one.、Mm. 
let's do art again. Okay, 31, we need to redo this one. Okay, so describe an art exhibition that you visited. An art exhibition. You should say when you saw this exhibition, where the exhibition was held, what was on display, and it's explain your impression of the ex exhibition. And you have part three of arts. So I already explained to you this one. We did this one before. So what can art bring to life? Should a school system include and improve the teaching of art as a subject, you know? Why? Do people have different concepts of art? It means like um, what people see as beautiful or art can be can vary between people. Some people may think that it's trash or some other people will appreciate it and think it's art, you know? So do people have different concepts of art and why? Does it depend on their viewpoint, how they were educated uh, on their, um, how can I say, life experience or something like that? And so the next question is, why are some artworks expensive? Think about a price, uh, think about the painters or the, the artists, if they are famous or not, their reputation. And also think about um, people who often collect art, you know, they can resell those art for more money. That's, that's something that is uh, very commonly happening. Why are some artwork expensive? Okay, why do some people like to collect famous paintings? I think it's not that hard to answer this one once you already throw this. Okay, some time to think now. Okay, so Ms. Tu, can you describe an art exhibition that you visited? So I'm going to talk about a time when I, vis I had a chance to visit an art exhibition. And it was held in Hanoi City. In, and the reason why I was taken to this art exhibition it was that it was my 15th birthday, and my parents wanted to give me a chance to experience to experience something new. At first, I think I didn't have any high hopes about this uh, visit. And I think art was not always my favorite since I was uh, small. And I think I didn't really have any high expectations. However, I was really surprised by all the <coughs> displays that were on in that uh, art exhibition. And the art subjects were mostly contemporary art. And they belong to a lot of different uh, errors and a lot of different uh, artists, including a lot of paintings, potteries, sculptures, and a few sculptures, sculptures. sculptures. It's sculptures. Wait, it's sculpture. Yeah, with a P. Sculptures and paintings. Yes, what else do you mention? Yeah, and uh, a few were, I think, uh, the 3D projections and the topics uh, were really diverse <laughs> and I can see and I could see a lot of different uh, images from different eras from war and to the relationship between humans and also uh, nature and animals as well and I was really surprised and I think it was somehow an eye-opening experience for me as I had a chance to experience something that I hadn't known before and it helps me to like I it helps me to think and to consider to reflect about all the beauty in the world and also I really admire the artists who really dedicate to this kind of art through their 
uh, through the products, through the paintings. Products. 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 Through their paintings, drawings, and many other kind of arts as well. I think it was a very uh, excellent, very wonderful experience for me. I see. All right, so let's come to part three now. So uh, what can art bring to life then? Well, I think art can bring a lot of different things to life. Um, first, I think they serve as an entertainment tool for many people. Mm. Nowadays, there are many people who really like <clears throat> art. And they feel like uh, it is one of their hobbies and by doing arts or by looking at uh, other artists' um, products of art, I think they somehow feel a sense of um, peace and they feel really relaxed and peaceful when they look at some kind of art, which really motivates them to um, try and to like uh, relax to recharge their energy and uh, secondly i think art really helps uh, people to uh, help people to uh, understand the beauty of life i think through many different kind of art they can display they can portray a lot of different lives a lot of different times in the past and also many uh, predictions in the future uh, and those kind of uh, topics that are covered in art can help people to have a more to have a broader knowledge about uh, the, their surrounding life and also give them a chance to <coughs> think and to um, to uh, reflect on many other aspects of life Mm. So should a school system include and improve the teaching of art and why? Well, I think it is necessary for the school system to mm. uh, involve and to improve the teaching of art. Mm. Well, I think the reason is that um, art brings about a lot of uh, advantages to students. Firstly, I think it, it helps people it helps students to become more creative. Well, as a matter of fact, when learning art, students are allowed to draw to, and allowed to create anything as, well, as, uh, as much as they want and whatever way they want. And I think this way they can really uh, benefit from art with uh, their logical or their thinking and also their creativity <clears throat> and also i think besides that art i think uh, learning art can help children for, can help students uh from the very like from the compulsory from the like hard subjects that they have to study at school and when they learn arts they can actually relax and just let their mind wander anywhere they want. Well, at school, students have to learn a lot of different subjects, uh, such as maths or literature. Literature, literature. Literature. <coughs> and sometimes they are put too much pressure. And sometimes they are put under too much pressure and they cannot really have many chances to create and to invent to just try something new however with art i think they have more chances to um, do something completely new and something uh -huh. like different <clears throat> and they just can't do whatever they want without any fixed instructions from their teachers so i think definitely school system should include and improve art i the see teacher. Hmm, I, I do agree completely with that too. So do people have different concepts of art and why? Absolutely. I think as well as a lot of different things in life, many people will have completely 
different concepts of art as well.、Mm. I think sometimes there are many displays. Sometimes there are many pictures of some famous artists that some people find very boring and nothing interesting. However, it is the opposite for other people when they consider it as a very unique and as a way to as a, a message that the artists want to convey to them.、Uh, for example. Mm, for example, maybe in、uh, fashion,、mm. uh, many people regard,、uh, for example, Balenciaga、uh, brand. Second, second, what's that? Balenciaga. Balenciaga. Is 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 he Valens? Right? Did you mention Valens before? I know Valens is like、uh, he's an artist,、uh, and he also、uh, is a philosopher, right?、Mm, uh, No, I think the brand,、uh, Balenciaga. Ah, you mentioning the、yeah. brand? I see.、Uh, what brand?、Yeah. Balenciaga. Yeah. Is that <laughs> Balenciaga? Okay, never mind that. All right, so yeah, please continue right, with that brand. Okay. Brand. Yeah, and、uh, some people regard the clothes and <laughs> shoes.、Uh, on, Of this brand to be really unique, and it part it conveys a message about、uh, uniquity and uh, like、um, a ground big a groundbreaking thing for people to try.、Mm. However, some people consider it、uh, nonsense, and it had nothing to do with、uh, being unique, but and rather it is really.、Um, Unsuitable for、uh, people to wear, and sometimes inconvenient, inconvenient, and uncomfortable <laughs> as well.、Mm -hmm. So I think the concept, the, the concept of art, can be seen, can be observed with through so, many people. Can be observed. Observed、um, in many different ways from、mm -hmm. many pe different people. Right. I see. So, why are some artworks expensive? Artworks here can be many things, like sculptures, paintings,、um, sometimes figures, or even like the whole building. You know. So, why are some artworks like expensive? It depends on what kind of artwork we're speaking of, right? Well, I think there are many factors contributing to this.、Um, why? Some artworks are expensive. For example, I think first,、uh, it can be due to、uh, the famous artists that produce those artworks.、Uh, for example, there are many famous、uh, artists or famous、um, fashion brands, and they produce a lot of different artworks. And just because before. Just because in the past they have done, they they did something really、uh, cool and something really unique, and it was really popular among people, and I think that reputation still remains nowadays, and、oh, I think that's、reputation. why people continue to trust and continue to buy those,、uh, and continue to believe that those artworks are worth their price. Also, I think it can be due to the materials, or due to the the materials, or maybe the hard work that the artist dedicated to those artworks. You know, there's a saying、yeah. I want to tell you: some artworks are worth their prices in gold. Yeah. Một số tác phẩm nghệ thuật đáng 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 trả vàng để mua nó đấy. Some artwork are worth their price in gold. It means that those are, are very expensive, but they are worth it because why? The reputation of the artist, and you buy it, you can resell it for more money, even more money. Okay, anything else you can add? <clears throat>、uh, yeah, I think、uh, also about the materials and、uh, the hard work that the artist、mm. dedicated to producing those artworks. For example, there are many materials that. Uh, are really hard to find. Where、mm. uh, to uh, actually 
uh, finish an artwork, and sometimes the artist has to travel and has to um, try a lot of different things in mm. order to make the best of their the materials to um, uh, to their artworks, and since they have to work really hard and they have to i think they have to spend a lot of time and energy into producing them into uh, planning and into finding the materials and into um, arranging the uh, late uh, and uh, arranging the uh, and arranging how they how the items how the how the item how the items, how the features should be placed. And that's, I think that's why, uh, I think that's also a reason why some artworks are really expensive. And you know, it's ironic, but I think, you know, in the life of many artists, once they die, those, their artworks started to become, started to become much more expensive because once they die, their talents are become more well recognized by people, which is very ironic in my opinion. Ironic. It's very ironic. <clears throat> now, why do some people like to collect famous paintings? Remember, paintings, not pictures, okay? Mm, well, I think it can be attributed to two main reasons. The first one is that it's due to their own interest. For some people, uh, have uh, famous paintings mean a lot to them, and they just have a very special taste in art. And sometimes those uh, paintings, uh, those famous paintings, can really be really meaningful. And for them, it it feels like that they convey some kind of message that is very valuable to those people. Mm -hmm. And they want to collect those in order to just remind them of something else or just to merely uh, admire those um, pictures, those paintings. <clears throat> I say to and admire also, those I think things. the second reason is that people just want to show off their wealth. Mm -hmm. That's one very good reason to show off their wealth, or you can use the word to flaunt. Remember this word? To flaunt their wealth. Quite cool. A lot of people do that, you know. Some people, they just love to show off. They flaunt their wealth a lot. Anything else? <clears throat> well, I think those people, they do not really have any, un they do not have much understanding of mm -hmm. those famous paintings but merely want to collect those famous paintings in order to show that they have a taste and to show that they are rich and they can afford famous paintings that other people even if they want they cannot have them and i think that's a kind of um, like uh, they want to find how well, how well they, they are, are to other people yeah well, famous paintings. And remember, the resale values. Look at the resale, the resale value of those paintings. The resale values of those paintings will, will be higher, of course, through time. Because those paintings are unique, you know. Those paintings are unique. You cannot find another one like that in the world. Mấy cái tác phẩm nó đâu có phải là hàng bán hàng loạt đâu. Chỉ có một cái duy nhất thôi trên thế giới. And once they once they're done, one once the uh, products degrade, you cannot make another one like that ever. So that's why the price is keep increasing, you know. <clears throat> And I think also think about um the fact that some people they genuinely, some people they genuine Some people there genuinely want to preserve artwork, you know. Một số người họ thật sự là thật lòng họ muốn bảo tồn những tác phẩm nghệ thuật. Some people there genuinely want to genuinely want to uh, 
uh, preserve artworks. So that's why they spend their money to collect famous paintings and keep them inside of their home, you know. So it's not just about selling back or show off their wealth. It's some people, they genuinely want to preserve artworks that so they do that. Some people, they even collect famous paintings. So later when they die, they donate, donate those to a uh, national museum, you know. Sau khi mà chồng họ chuẩn bị chết rồi, họ uh, donate hết cho những bảo tàng quốc gia hết, you know. So that everyone can have a chance to appreciate the art, appreciate those artwork. Okay, good, good. Now let's draw another one. <clears throat> um, try 56. Describe a photo of yourself you have taken. A photo of yourself you have taken. <clears throat> <clears throat> you should say where you took it. I, I better do this quick. And when you took the photo, how you took it, and explain how you felt about a photo. Okay. All right, some time to think. Okay, Miss Tu, please describe a photo of yourself you have taken. have taken a photo of myself as uh, an application for my ID card. Mm -hmm. But I think I took it um, when, about two years ago when I was 15. And I had to go to the administration building in order to take this photo. Mm -hmm. And that place was really crowded, full of people. and. I barely had any time to prepare myself before actually taking the photo. And they just grabbed me and put me in a position where they just uh, snapped the camera and a picture and a photo of me just came out. And when I saw the, the outcome, the result, I was in complete, I was completely shocked. I could <clears throat> barely recognize myself. My hair wasn't in place and I looked really pale. And I felt oh God, like that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that photo of me felt like I had just recovered from a serious illness. And I felt really upset and really sad because I had to with this ID card of with this photo in my ID card, I had to take it everywhere. And that's something that I really don't want to I, I I really don't want to uh, admit at all. Mm -hmm. However, it is still the truth, and I could and I can do nothing about it but to accept the but accept but to accept it. And even now, I still wish that I could go back in time and just prepare myself the pet the best. Maybe put some makeup on or just put on the lipsticks. So too late I now. Yeah. I've said too late now. Once the picture is taken, it's taken. <laughs> I see. Okay. Good, good. Good, good. All right. Let's try 55. Describe a magazine that you like. You should say what the magazine is. Like, uh, who does the magazine? What's the target audience of the magazine? Like, so for what audience? The target audience. Cái mục tiêu, cái khách hàng mục tiêu, cái cái người mà xem cái 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 đó là đối tượng nào? Like what target audience of those magazine? Like young people, uh, teenagers, uh, adults, working people, or seniors, people who are older, children, something like that. What's the target audience? And when you started reading this magazine, what the content is, like, uh, are there any articles, many articles about many things you can mention? Explain why you like this magazine. Okay, some time to think. 
All right, Miss uh, Anthony, please describe a magazine that you like, please. So I'm um, <coughs> uh, actually I think I'm not a big fan of magazines and newspapers. However, I think I have one my one of my really uh, pop one of the popular magazines that I think I have a preference to. I think that's the L magazine, and it is published in many areas of the world in the world, and is very famous. In the among, world, you mean? In the world, yeah. Um, among many people who love beauty, uh, it's about uh, fashion, and its uh, targeted audience is, I think, the people who are in love with beauty and uh, clothes and fashion. And I start, I just uh, only started reading this magazine about a year ago. And I have somehow, uh, I have uh, on and off uh, follows is in Instagram and bought a few of this mag of the, the latest magazines in order to read uh, when I'm at home. And the content is about fashion and a lot of celebrities with their idealized uh, body images and also a lot of new fashion trends, a lot of new fashion icons and a lot of uh, unique clothes. And I think there are many, there are also many co quotes and uh, statements about uh, keeping yourself beautiful and just stay positive. And I think the reason why I have a preference for this magazine is because they cover a lot of different aspects of fashion uh, not only just about clothes but also about beauty inside yourself and also how to keep yourself uh, positive and not being insecure but with your body image and also there are many famous people who i like that appear on this magazine and i really like seeing pictures of them so I think that's uh, the, the magazine that I like. Okay, very well. <clears throat> okay, very good, very good. It's 55. Okay, let's try 92. And there you go. 92, it's describe a piece of equipment that is important in your home. It can be any equipment. It doesn't have to be like electronic equipment, you know. It can be an equipment that doesn't run on electricity. Or it can be like anything, you know, that is important in your home. You should say what it is, how often you use it, and with whom you use it. Like, for example, some people, they use it. They use... um. For example, a gym equipment, a gym uh, equipment, like, for example, a bench press or a chest, a chest press machine. It might be a chest press machine or something like that. But there are many people in the same uh, house, in the same family who use it, something like that, you know. So with whom you use it, how often you use it explain why it's important <clears throat> and then you have part three what kinds what kinds of machines are there in people's homes you can talk about a lot of them and what are the differences between the young and the old be careful the young but the old in their attitudes toward electronic gadgets like for example do they accept new gadgets into their life easily do they um are they um confident about using them something like that what kind of what kinds of profession require people to use machines like there are a lot of professions that require people to use machine like for example a laptop everyone need to use it a smartphone for example any job anyone everyone need to use it or um some jobs like for example if you are a technician 
you need to use like a screw driver. You know what screw driver is, right? Cái tô vít, cái vạn vít, vạn ốc. A screw driver. Then you you need to use hammer. You need to use um wrench. You know a wrench, right? You know a wrench, right? Yeah. Cái cờ lê, a wrench. Uh, something like that. And if you are a dentist, you need to use similar um things like this too. Or if you're a doctor, if you work with your hands, you know, you use machines a lot. If you, like, for example, if you work in, let's say, a shop, you have to use uh, a cash, a cashier machine, a cashier machine, I think. It's called a cash register, I think. And something like that. So any profession requires people to use machines now. Now, will many people works? Uh, will many people's work be done by robots in the future? I think this is very similar to the uh, to the question about AI. You know, we, we we've been through this one before. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, Mister, please describe a piece of equipment that is important in your home. I'm going to talk about uh, the most useful and important uh, piece of equipment in my home is my smart refrigerator. Ah, you have a smart refrigerator. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, my mother got it. Uh, my mother bought it uh, during a sale last year, and it was a very good deal, to be honest, because it was. Uh, on sales about 50% and it really a lot it was really a lot and uh, I my family shared using this uh, equipment this equipment and it is really important because I my my whole family we not only just keep the food fresh but it is but the refrigerator is also equipped equipped with a touch screen on the door that lets everyone in my house uh, manage the grocery manage list. you mean manage right manage yeah manage mm -hmm. the grocery list and also we can connect it to our phones and mm, we can turn course. and turn it on and turn it off whenever we want without having to be at home and also we have a um we have a small smart tv on that um refrigerator as well and when i'm cooking dinner i can really uh watch a, a television television show and <laughs> it can really entertain me while cooking and i think this is really this really comes in handy whenever i i'm in the kitchen and I think I have to like um, go to see the refrigerator a few times a day, not only to just to grab a uh, food, but also to use and to uh, try its uh, smart features. Mm. And I think it is important because it is like uh, the center of my kitchen and it is, in it is connected to the internet, which means that I can control it from remotely when I'm not at home and I can also receive notifications if I leave the door open and it will close it for me as well which is really convenient because I'm really forgetful uh, and also uh, it can really it, it is useful in uh, keeping the food fresh and it doesn't I think it doesn't really uh, make it doesn't really cost a lot of energy when using this kind of refrigerator and so after all i think this smart refrigerator has become an important part of my kitchen and also um, in my family members part as well we all find it very useful mm, very well now <clears throat> so what kinds of machines are there in people's homes well i think nowadays there are a lot of different machines in people's homes. They can be uh, smart technologies and they can be just um, the normal things. Um, for example, uh, in I think in almost everyone's home, 
there will be a television or a, a fan or a refrigerator. And those are the machines that help people to um, help people to uh, with, to have people with a lot of different things in our daily life uh, to entertain, to watch uh, news, to watch shows or to um, uh, or to keep the food fresh and there are a lot of different things as well and also there are many kind of machines such as vacuum cleaners with, or dishwashers that help people in doing housework and it doesn't really uh, take a lot of time uh, using those machines and people can really trust in their ability to keep the house clean I see. It's just about keeping their houses clean. Like, for example, I have my cleaning robots, you know, and uh, it's my cleaning robot from Xiaomi. It's, um, yeah, and it has been very helpful. Also a smart uh, fridge and a washing machine from uh, Electrolux that I just bought like three months ago. Actually, those are very, very useful machines and vital. Now, what are the differences between the young and the old in their attitudes towards electronic gadgets then? What do you think? I think uh, the different attitudes between the young and the old towards electronic gadgets are really uh, large, really big. Well, I think mostly the young will consider those electronic gadgets uh, to be really useful and handy when they have to do something. Uh, for example, they can find uh, vacuum cleaners or dishwashers really useful in their daily life because they are too busy with their work or with their study. So they have to resort to those uh, equipments, to those machines in order to um, help them do with the housework. But uh, however, I think some of the old will consider it to be really harmful as it uh, just prevents, it just uh, makes the young become lazy and they will no longer do the housework but just use the but just use the electronic gadgets all the time. And it sometimes those gadgets do require uh, an adequate a certain amount of energy. And of course, they contribute, they attribute to the cost or to the bill that they have to pay. So they, so I think the, the old would rather use, um, they would uh, rather not use those electronic gadgets. I see. So what kinds of professions require people to use machines? Well, I think uh, in this modern era, I think any kind of profession will require people to use machines. Uh, even in the most um, normal profession. Uh, for example, uh, I think uh, <coughs> jobs such as I think uh, teachers or uh, teachers or workers or um, architectures, they all have to use a lot of machines to mm -hmm. do their work. Uh, First, for teachers, they have to use um, they have to use uh, computers or a lot of or the screen in order to show the students a lot of illustrations or pictures or just uh, uh, many different uh, homework or exercises that uh, they can show to the students and they do not have to write it on the board but they just can write it on their um, tablet or on their computer and it is shown to everyone in a very clear and uh, in a very clear way and also I think uh, architectures they can also just uh, uh, draw and sketch their drawings on the on their um, electronic devices and they just and because I think those can help them to just measure and to 
estimate the amount of uh, materials, uh, the, the number of materials or the size of the buildings that they are going to build a lot more accurate and a lot more accurate than just by than drawings by human. Mm -hmm. So I think Thanks. in general, I think all professions require people to use machines. I see. Now, so will many people's work be done by robots in the future? So this question does not exclude them from the workforce, okay? This question doesn't say that robots and AI, artificial intelligence will replace human. It doesn't say that, okay? Be careful. It just says that will many people's work be done by robots in the future? It doesn't mean that, it doesn't say that people will lose all of their jobs, you know? It doesn't say that, okay? Nhớ là câu này nó không hề nói là tất cả con người sẽ mất hết việc đâu nha. Nó chỉ nói là liệu công việc của nhiều người sẽ được thực hiện bởi robot trong tương lai chứ? You know, so you have to be careful with that. Okay, can you answer that question? So I think my <coughs> the answer is yes. I think a lot and I think in the future, uh, many people's work will be done by robots. Mm. Well, I think even nowadays, there are a lot of things that robots can do uh, instead of humans. For example, I think in cleaning houses, there used to be a lot of cleaning teams and uh, they are they, they were required to clean the house uh, to clean the house so that um, the owners will um, so that maybe the new owners or just the owners will um, do not have to uh, make time uh, using those machines in order to um, clean the house themselves However, nowadays, there are many, however, I think nowadays and in the future, there will be a lot of new and advanced and modern robots that can help people to not, not require them to hire a cleaning team anymore, but they can help them in cleaning the house in the most, uh, in the cleanest way. And in the cleanest and most effective way possible, right? Yeah in the cleanest <cười> and the most effective way possible. Trong cái cách mà hiệu quả nhất có thể và sạch nhất có thể. Actually, when I bought my cleaning box, it was very, very good, you know. It cleans the floor very well. And my house always clean. That's why. But I also have to hire like a Bitaski lady, a cleaning lady. Uh, once per week because, you know, the robot cannot clean the surfaces like tables or furniture, you know. Okay, so uh, is that all? Do you have anything more to say about this one? Well, I think maybe in hospitals, uh, robots can, be, can come in handy as well. And uh, sometimes uh, the nurses or the doctors uh, do not have to directly diagnosis, diagnose the um, health problems, but they sometimes they can use those machines to just um, uh, fundamentally um, diagnose the issues and then they report to the doctors. And if, um, and I think this way it can somehow save a lot of time. And also those robots can be uh, designed to hmm. give a possible um, prescription for the patients with the um, like with a correct dosage, like yeah. for example, with a correct do uh, with a correct dosage of drugs, and it can administer it can actually administer uh, drugs. You know, nó tiêm thuốc hoặc là nó chích thuốc cho bệnh nhân một cách mà chính xác nhất. It can administer drug in a most uh, effective and uh, precise way, you know. But I don't think machine will replace doctors in the future because we still need a brain behind that because machines, they do malfunction, you know. You know, machine, they do malfunction all the time. Máy thì lúc này nó cũng có thể là hoạt động sai bất kỳ lúc nào nha. All right, so I think that's all about today now.